So how can we help people to love God more? Je toweza kusaidia vipi watu wakamuhisi Mungu zaidi? And be devoted to the Lord. Na wawe wamejitolea kwa Mungu. Now, the Bible talks much about the love of God. Biblia inazungumza sana kuhusu upendo wa Mungu. The love of God motivates people to be changed. Upendo wa Mungu unawasukuma watu kubadilishwa. For many people when they hear the love of God they just say oh it's something far away. Lakini watu wanaposikia kuhusu upendo wa Mungu hufikiria kwamba ah ni kitu kilichoko mbali. They think of the love of God you know it's it's too far away and not related related to me. Wanafikiria kwamba upendo wa Mungu ni kitu ni kitu kilichoko mbali na hakina uhusiano na wao. Now you notice that sometimes parents want to talk to the children and say please do this please do that unagundua kwamba wakati mwingine wazazi wanataka kuambia watoto wao kwamba ufanye hili ufanye hili but one day when the, the children grow up and then they you know they have a, a, a romance and then they find that the children change suddenly na wakati ambapo watoto wanapoendelea kukua wanafika mahali pengine sasa wanaanza kuingiwa na mawazo yale ya mapenzi when they experience love and then they willing to change for their girlfriend or boyfriend. Unapata kwamba wanapohisi wanapokuwa na hisi ya upendo wanaanza kuwa na upendo kati ya vijana na wasichana. But sadly speaking, many people after marriage they lose the motivation again. Lakini sasa unapata kwamba watu wanapokwisha kuoana ule upendo unadidimia. Because they all they always want to demand the wife or husband you have to do this you have to do that manake sasa kuna kule kutaka kuambia mwanamke inafaa ufanye hivi na mwanamke akwambia inafaa wewe ufanye hivi and then when a husband or wife doesn't do it then they get angry na kama mwanamke ama mwanaume hatafanya kile mmoja wao ameuliza kufanya unapata mmoja wao anakasirishwa so the situation when they are dating and when they are married are different kwa hivyo ile hali ambapo bado unachumbiana na ile hali ya watu sasa wanaishi katika ndoa kuna utofauti. When they are dating they feel the love and the joy you know when they are uh, together. Na sasa wakati wanapochumbiana ule upendo unakuwa na mvuto ulio na nguvu zaidi. And uh, they they willing to do things for each other. Na wanataka wewe natamani afanyie mchumbake hiki mwingine wewe afanyie mchumbake hiki. They long to see each other wanatamani sana kuonana but after marriage lakini baada ya, ya kuoana they start to demand na sasa wanaanza kuwa na majukumu demand is the area of the law na sasa majukumu ni upande wa sheria you have to do this do that ni lazima ufanye hiki ufanye kile in dating katika kuchumbiana is love ni upendo i like you ninakupenda i don't want to be with you Sitaka kuwa mbali na wewe. That's in the area of grace. Sasa, huu ni wakati wa neema. When people feel loved and cared for, kama watu wanahisi kwamba wamependana na kila mmoja na jali mwingine, they feel the grace from the other person. Sasa wanasikia kusifiwa kutoka kwa mtu mwingine, kwa upande mwingine. But after marriage, lakini baada ya kuoana, the demand something from the other person. Sasa anatamani kingine kutoka kwa mwingine. When a person cannot give it, kama huyo mtu hawezi pia na kitu hicho, they become angry. Wana mmoja anakuwa wa kukasirika. I want to say that most people grow up in law. Nataka kusema kwamba watu wengi wamekuwa katika sheria. From childhood, I mean, of course, parents do love the children kutoka kwa utoto unaelewa kwamba wazazi wanawapenda wanao but very often the parents will say you have to do this you have to do that lakini utapata wazazi wanawaambia kwamba inafaa ufanye hiki ufanye kile and they blame the children for not doing something na sasa pia huwa wanaanza kulalamikia watoto kwamba mbona haujafanya kile na kile and when people go to work it's always demanding being demanded by the boss na pia unapoenda kule mahali unapofanya kazi kuna maitarajio ya, ya tajiri wako I believe in Jesus generally we first know that love of God. Kumwamini Yesu Kristo ndio kitu cha kwanza kujua kuhisi upendo wa Mungu. But very often people begin to say oh, oh I haven't you know done what the Lord told me to do. Lakini kwa wakati mwingine wao wanafanya wanasema kwamba sijafanya kile Mungu anataka nifanye. And people say you have to pray you have to read the Bible. Alafu sasa wengine wanaambia kwamba lazima uombe usome Biblia. So it's again I haven't done it I have been I haven't been a good Christian. Oh, si si fanya hiki si kuwa na maswali mzuri. When you think about God is God is demanding. Unapofikiria kumhusu Mungu juu kwamba Mungu ana matarajio. I cannot fulfill the requirement of God. Na siezi nikatimiliza yale mahitaji ya Mungu. So they feel God. 
Sasa wanaaskia kwamba wanahisi Mungu. So many Christians approach Jesus with the law. Kwa hivyo watu wengi wanamwendea kwa Yesu chini ya sheria. And many preachers present Christianity as the law. Na sasa watu wengi huwa wanaweka ule Ukristo kama sheria. They talk about the gospel wanazungumza kuhusu injili but after a person believe in Jesus lakini baada mtu kuamini katika Kristo they start to talk about what you have to do wanaanza kukuambia sababu sasa umekwisha kuamini kwa Kristo kuna haya na haya ambayo unastahili ukafanye now i talk about what we should do too na kwa hiyo pia mimi nazungumza kile ambacho inafaa tufanye but it's very important that we are motivated by the grace and the love of god lakini ni muhimu kwamba tukapatikuwa na kusukumwa kwa nehema na upendo wa Mungu now I have a very good relationship with my wife. Mimi niko na uhusiano mzuri na mke wangu. Picture of my husband, my my wife. Hii ni picha ya mke wake, yeye na mke wake. And in my cell phone. Sorry. In the cell phone too you can see the pictures of my wife. Na pia katika simu yake utaona picha ya mke wake. My wife really loves me. Mke wake anampenda zaidi. And we love each other. Na tunapendana. We want to build a good marriage. Tunataka tujenge ndoa iliyo nzuri. When the two of us go home together, kama sisi wawili tunaenda nyumbani pamoja, we'll see who is the first one to get the slippers for the other one. Tutaangalia tuone ni nani anatangulia kupeana zile patipati za kukanyaga. When we brush teeth, together we always brush teeth together tunapo sukua meno yetu huwa tunasukua pamoja we always try to get the toothpaste for the other person sasa tunakimbiana tuone mwenye atakuwa wa kwanza kuleta dawa ya meno ya mwingine and when we wash dishes together na pia viombo huwa tunaosha pamoja it's a time of chatting ni wakati wa safari chat chat oh ha ni wakati wa mazungumzo in a relationship is always giving katika uhusiano ni kupeana when i need something i need some water kama ninahitaji maji my wife wants to get the water for me mke wangu hukimbia kuniletea maji even when we are both in bed hata kama tuko wote wawili kitandani and i cough na ninakohoa my wife would runs to get the water for me na sasa mke wangu atakimbia kuniletea maji. Her love motivates me to love her. Na upendo ndio unaonisukuma kumpenda. I never want to do anything to make her unhappy. Sitaki nifanye chochote cha kumkasirisha. I never want her to feel that I'm unhappy with her in any way. Na sitaki pia ahisi kwamba mimi nimekasirishwa na yeye kwa njia nyingine. That is being motivated by love. Hiyo ndiyo kusukumwa na upendo. Now how will God na upendo wa Mungu many people just know for God so loved the world watu wengi wanafahamu kwamba Mungu akaupenda ulimwengu Jesus died for me Yesu alikufa kwa ajili yangu Jesus gave me eternal life Yesu upeana maisha ya milele Jesus helped my life Yesu usaidia maisha yangu but many people don't go in depth to think about how much is the love of God for us lakini watu wengi hawaendi kiundani kabisa kujua upendo wa Mungu uko na kiwango kipi As Paul said, how high, how wide, how deep is the love of God? Hawaendi kuchimbua kujua upendo wa Mungu kwenda juu unatoshana vipi? Upana wake unatoshana namna gani? My heart is full of the love of God. Moyo wangu umejaa na upendo wa Mungu. I'm totally convinced of the love of God. Mimi sasa nimeshawishika kwa ajili ya upendo wa Mungu. And also after I, you know, experience the Holy Spirit, na bali feeling of the Holy Spirit. Na wakati nilipohisi kule kujazwa kwa Roho Mtakatifu, when the evangelist lay hand on me in 1998. Wakati mwinjilist nilikea mikono mwaka wa 98. At that time I already have been a pastor for 15 years wakati huo nilikuwa nimeingia katika huduma kwa miaka 15 iliyopita when he lay hand on me i felt power like electricity enter me alipo niwekea mikono nilihisi nikana kwamba nguvu zinaniingia kama zile za umeme and i felt the love of god so strong in me na sasa nikapata upendo wa mungu umejaa ndani yangu i cried for a long time nililia kwa muda mrefu 
And I said, Lord, I didn't know I can have this deep relationship with you. And ikasema kwamba Mungu sikujua naweza kuwa na uhusiano wa kiundani na wewe hivi. I can experience a love like that. Nina sikujua naweza hisi upendo jinsi hivyo. On that day when I went home, siku ile nilipoenda nyumbani, I want to keep praising God. Nilitaka niendelee kumsifu Mungu. I was in a public transportation. Nilikuwa katika gari la umma. I want to raise my hand to praise God. Nilitaka kuinua mikono zangu kumsifu Mungu. But it was in a bus. Lakini sasa nilikuwa ndani ya gari. So what I did, I put my head against the wall. Sasa kila nilifanya niliweka mikono zangu kwenye uku. against the window. Karibu na dirisha la lile gari. So it's pretending I'm putting my hand there. Nikajida yani ninajifanya kwamba nimeweka tu mkono wangu kwa But I was praising God. Lakini nilikuwa namsifu Mungu. God you're so good. Mungu wewe ni mwema. I didn't know you loved me so much. Sikujua kwamba wanipenda zaidi hivyo. I can experience your great love. Ninaweza hisi upendo wako mkuu. And I said, Lord, I missed that close relationship with you. Nikasema kwamba Mungu, kumbe nilikuwa nakosa uhusiano na wewe. I want to keep this deep relationship. Sasa nataka nikaweke uhusiano wa kiundani. I spent long time praying every day. Nilichukua muda mwingi nikiomba kila siku. And one day when I cried to Jesus. Na siku ingine nilipo nililia Kristo. I said, Lord Jesus. Nikasema Yesu Bwana. A mighty power went through me. Na hiyo wakati huo huo nguvu zikaniingia. I said, that's wonderful. Nikasema, wow, hiyo ni ya kushangaza. I can experience this response to my prayer immediately. Ninaweza hisi kwamba anajibu maombi yangu wakati huo. I cried again. Nikalia mara tena. The power came again. Na tena nguvu zikakuja. From that day until today. Kutoka hiyo siku mpaka leo. Every time I think of Jesus. Kila wakati ninapomfikia kuhusu Yesu. The power of God went through me. Nguvu za Mungu zinaniingia. And then one day experience a joy of the Lord in a meeting. Na siku ingine nikiwa katika mkutano nilihisi furaha ya Mungu. I really want to keep the joy. Nilitaka niendelee kuwa kwa ile furaha. So I kept look kept loving God. Sasa nikaendelea kutazamia kumpenda Mungu. And I got to have this joy. Sasa nikaendelea kuwa na hii furaha. And when I went home in a bus, na nilipoenda nyumbani ndani ya gari, I want to keep the joy. Nilitaka niweke ile furaha. But it was in a bus. Lakini tena kulikuwa ndani ya gari. I cannot just go out. <laughs> Singe endele tukucheka ndani ya gari nikicheka. Now even now. Na hata sasa hii is the natural joy of God going through me. Sasa imekuwa ni upendo wa Mungu wa kiasili ambao unabubujika ndani mwangu. I wanted to keep the joy in the bus. Nataka nilitaka kuweka ile furaha katika gari. So I did this. Sasa nilifanya hivi. Quietly. Kama nimetulia. So I, I was rejoicing in the Lord without laughing out. Alikuwa anafurahia Bwana pasipo kucheka kwa kusikizwa. And after that every day I spent much time praying. Na baada hiyo nilichukua kila siku yangu nikiomba. Every time I think of Jesus. Kila wakati ninapofikiria kumhusu Yesu. His joy and his power and his love. Upendo wake, upendo wake na nguvu zake na furaha yake inanibujikia ndani mwangu. Even in the middle of the night. Hata katikati ya usiku. God is good. Mungu ni mzuri. God is really good. Mungu ni mwema kabisa. And we can we can all have this close relationship. Na kama tuweza kuwa na uhusiano wa karibu na yeye. And then I start to think about all the areas God has loved us. Na sasa nikaanza kufikiria zile sehemu zote ambazo Mungu ametupenda. The more I think about the love of God. Jinsi ninavyoendelea kufikiria kuhusu upendo wa Mungu, I realize that he loves me much more than my wife. Ninagundua kwamba amenipenda zaidi kushinda vile mke wangu ananipenda. His love is so overwhelming. Upendo wake ni ule ulio wa furaha kuu. I can pray for hours. Ninaweza omba kwa masaa. I enjoy being with God. Ninafurahia kuwa na Mungu. Every time I pray, kila dakika ninapoomba, I can experience love and joy and peace. Ninaweza hisi upendo na furaha na amani. Now one time I prayed for someone who was a drug addict. Siku ingine nikaombea mtu ambaye ni mwadarati wa madawa ya kulevya. After I prayed for him he said, nilipomwombea nikasema, he said when you pray for me I feel more comfort than when I took drugs. Akamwambia kwamba unaponiombea nasikia nimetulia kushinda vile huwa ninaongea na watu wanaouza madawa za kulevya. And there are people I pray for them. Na sasa kuna watu niliwaombea and he said they, they said they asked me Are you still here? Na wala muuliza ah kwani bado uko hapa? 
I said, where do you think I went? And I He said, in a prayer, I went to a different place. Some place like heaven. And he said, so when I see how loving God is, I say, Lord, you are full of love. But many of your people don't know your love. And then when I read the scriptures, I have new light in every Bible verse. I'm going to share with you some of these verses. This simple verse, Luke chapter 19, verse 10. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save who are lost. Now this is a verse we all know. But the Bible says in Luke 19, 10. Luka 19 mstari wa 10. That Jesus came to seek and to save the lost. Kwamba Yesu alikuja kutafuta na kuokoa wale waliopotea. I like to to think about the time when you were saved. Nataka uanze kufikiria wale wakati ambapo uliokolewa. Now I think about the time when I was saved. Na nikifikiria mimi wakati nilipokuwa nimeokolewa. Can use different situation Mungu alitumia hali tofauti and different people na watu tofauti and he moved in my heart na akausukuma moyo wangu to draw me to come to him ili kuvuta kumsongea karibu and then on a day in the evangelistic na meeting wakati siku nyingine katika mkutano wa kiwinjilist already God has prepared my heart tayari Mungu amekwishaandaa roho yangu he let me read something from a scientist na sasa alinisaidia nikajifunza kitu kutoka kwa wanasayansi who said that the world is full of wonderful design ambao walisema kwamba ulimwengu umejawa na vitu zilizo zikuwa na maumbile mazuri that this came from god who designed the world lakini hizi vitu zote zilitoka kwa mungu aliyeumba ulimwengu i was very curious sasa nilitaka kujua zaidi and when the, in the meeting when the preacher spoke na katika mkutano wakati muhubiri alipokuwa amehubiri I felt comfort and I felt love in my heart. And then the preacher asked, who is willing to believe in Jesus? In my heart, I really want to believe in Jesus. But I did not dare to raise my hand. And then he kept asking, Finally, I raised my hand. I felt suddenly a bright light come to me. I felt freedom in my heart. I experienced comfort. I felt just the whole person changed. Now, I don't know about your experience. Have you noticed how God draw you to him? How you worked in your life? And when you believe in Jesus, how you experience the joy and the peace? If you remember that, can you raise your hand? Now, I want to ask you a question. Do you have a question? Do you have a question? Do you have a question? You know that God has worked in your life. Sasa unajua kwamba kweli Mungu ameingia katika maisha yako. And God does it to every question. Na Mungu anajibu kila swali. So God is ministering to you all the time. Hivyo Mungu anakuhudumia kila wakati. And then after you are saved, na baada ya kuokoka, have you noticed God keep talking to you? Oh, don't, don't, don't pull it back. Don't pull it back. Oh, Stay close, please. Sasa. Okay, thank you. Have you noticed that God Keep talking to you. Mungu anaendelea kukunenea to tell you to repent. Kukuambia ukatubu. Even when we sin, wakati tunapofanya dhambi, have you noticed that you know God keep talking to us? Ushawahi kugundua kwamba Mungu anaendelea kutuzungumzia. But very often many Christians did not respond to God. Lakini mara nyingi wakristo huanga hawataki kumuitikia Mungu. And do not obey God. Na hawataki kumtii Mungu. 
But God keep talking to us. Lakini Mungu anaendelea kuwanenea. Until one day we say, Lord, I'm sorry for my sins. Mpaka siku moja usinie kwamba Mungu samahani kwa dhambi zangu. And one day we say, yes, we feel so bad when we sin. Na siku nyingine tunasi mpaka tunafika mahali pa kusema kwamba tunasikia vibaya tunapotenda dhambi. Now, John chapter 16 verse 8. John chapter 16 verse 8. John the gospel of John chapter 16 verse Injili yaona 16 mstari wa 8 where it says that the Holy the counselor the Holy Spirit came to convict the people of the world of sin of righteousness and of judgment Ile inayosema kwamba katika hemaya ya Mungu Roho Mtakatifu alikuja kwa ajili ya kutufanya sisi walio na dhambi tuhukumike Now you don't have to turn to the passage just write it down Sio lazima ukafungue Biblia wewe andika tu hizo mistari kwenye inoti yako All the passages you just write down go home and check Mistari yote utaandika chini utaenda kule nyumbani ujisomee Concentrate the uh, you know the in a message Nataka tu uwe makini kwa yale ambayo anazungumza The Holy Spirit came to convict us of our sin Ya kwamba Roho Mtakatifu alikuja ili sisi tukapate kumika kwa ajili ya dhambi moyoni mwetu. The point is we keep resisting God many times. Kipengele cha muhimu hapa ni kwamba huwa tunamzuia Mungu kila wakati. You know, an average Christian would have, you know, probably rejected God even a hundred times a week or more. Unajua Kristo ambao tuko nao kwa wiki moja huwa wamemkataa Mungu zaidi ya mara mia. Now let me ask you if you talk to a friend Wacha nikuulize kama utazungumza na rafiki yako. Elephant says I don't want you. Na rafiki yako akwambia mimi sikutaki. Disappear for me. Hebu niondoke. Will you still go to him? Je, bado utamrudia huyo rafiki yako aliyekufukuza? No. You reject him. Pia wewe utamkataa. But how many times have we rejected God? Lakini ni mara ngapi wewe umemkataa Mungu? It could be millions or trillions of times. Inaweza kuwa ni mamilioni na mamilioni ya mara. Now, in in our language is saying really God has thick you know um, what do you want what, what I mean is he doesn't feel shame like most people kile katika lugha tunasema kwamba Mungu wanga haoni aibu kama watu because of his love kwa sababu ya upendo wake now if you say to a friend i don't want to see you kama utaambia rafiki yako kwamba sitaki nikuone he will feel shame he comes back to you again right? ataona aibu kukurudia si ndio but god keep coming to us knowing that he will reject him again lakini mungu kando na kujua kwamba anajua utamkataa bado anakuita tu anasonga karibu na wewe but it doesn't mind being rejected lakini yeye hajali kwamba atakataliwa now if punishes If he punishes us with his majesty, we have no way to stay in the world. Lakini kama yeye atatuadhibu na ukuu wake, hatutawahi ishi dunia hii. According to his righteousness, he can just strike us dead. Kulingana na haki yake, anaweza tupiga chini na tufe. But he doesn't do that. Lakini hafanyi hivyo. Because of love, kwa sababu ya upendo, he knows that we are weak. Anajua kwamba sisi ni wadhaifu. He keep talking to our heart. Anaendelea kuzungumza kwa roho zetu. Until one day we respond. Mpaka siku ile ambayo tutakubali. I say God you love me so much. Na tuseme kwamba Mungu umenipenda zaidi. I want to respond to you with my love. Nataka sasa nikakubali na upendo wangu. That is me. Huyo ni mimi. Let me tell you I have rejected God many times too. Wacha nikwambie hata mimi nimemkataa Mungu safari nyingi. But that experience in 1998 hiyo sana ilifanyika mwaka wa 98 make me realize how strong God's love is ilifanya nijue jinsi Mungu alivyo na upendo mkuu how wonderful God is jinsi Mungu alivyo ajabu and also how we can carry the power of God to bless people na jinsi vile tunaweza tukabeba nguvu za Mungu ili tubariki watu i realize how powerful my life can be Nilikundua jinsi maisha yangu yaweza kuwa maisha ya nguvu. And I said I don't want to waste my life. Na nikasema sitaki niharibu maisha yangu. I want to live in the love of God from now. Nataka katika upendo wa Mungu kuanzia leo. So his love changed me. Sasa upendo wake ukanibadilisha. And the more I think about what he does. Na jinsi ninavyoendelea kufikiria jinsi anavyofanya vitu. The more I say I'm not worthy. Ndivyo ninavyosema kwamba mimi sistahili. God could have struck me dead many times. Mungu angeliniua mara nyingi. 
mingi but he did not lakini hakuwa and he kept working my heart na sasa aliendelea kungangana kutafuta moyo wangu and you are turned to him mpaka nilipomgeukia and then i say lord and i say my bwana I want to give my life to you totally. Nataka nikupe maisha yangu yote. Even though I have been a pastor for 15 years. Ingawaje nimekuwa mchungaji kwa miaka 15. I say from now on you are the boss. Nikamwambia Mungu kuanzia leo wewe ndiye mkubwa wangu. I submit to you totally. Sasa ninakuachilia jeshilia kwako kabisa. I don't want this to be you with any single thought in my mind. Sitaki sasa nikakukasirishe na uwezo lolote katika akili zangu. I don't want to reject you with my pride. Sitaki nikakukatae na kiburi changu. And the more I think about the word of God. Na ninavyoendelea kufikiria kuhusu upendo wa Mungu. And notice how he works in our life. Sasa ninagundua jinsi anayofanya katika maisha I say God you are so wonderful. Nasema kwamba Mungu wewe ni wa ajabu. And our passage is Psalm 139 verse 5. Mahali pengine ni katika za Psalms Psalm 139 Zaburi 103 mstari wa 9 verse 5 mstari wa 5. Zaburi 139 verse 5. Zaburi 139 mstari wa 5. There it says that the Lord has enclosed me In front of me and behind me and you have laid your hands on me. Nachosema kwamba Mungu ameniweka ako mbele ako na nyuma na ameniwekea mikono yake. What it means is that the Lord is in front of me and behind me and he's always laying his hand on me to bless me. Kile nasema kwamba Mungu kila wakati ako mbele yangu ako nyuma yangu na ananiwekea mikono yake. Now you might say is God doing that? Unasema kwamba je Mungu anafanya hilo? Let me ask you does God speak to you guide you? Usha ni kuuliza je Mungu anakunenea je anakuelekeza when you are not praying does God sometimes draw you to pray wakati ambapo hauombi je Mungu anakuvuta uanze kuomba when you are not thinking about God does God sometimes draw you to think kama haumfikiri kuhusu Mungu je Mungu anakuvuta unaanza kufikiria kumuhusu when we disobey God does God speak to us to guide us back kama hatumtii Mungu je Mungu anakuzungumzia kumrudia Have you noticed how many times God spoke to us? Ushawahi gundua ni mara ngapi Mungu amenena na sisi? So he's always in front of us and behind us and laying his hand on us. Kwa hivyo yeye ako mbele yetu, ako nyuma yetu na anatuwekea mikono. I tell you, you know, I'm, I it's, it's very sad that many Africans have been taken to America and other places to be slaves in the past. Na kuambia kwamba hili ni jambo ambalo si mzuri wa Afrika wengi wamepelekwa kule Amerika kufanywa kuwa watumwa. Now when the master say to the slave come Can the slave say no I don't want to come? Je, wakati ule mkubwa wa watumwa anaposema wewe njoo, je unaweza kwa kusema kwamba sitaki nikuje? No. I saw in one movie about slaves. Niliona kanda moja ya video kuhusu wafungwa. There was an old white man, kulikuwa na mzee mzungu and he was weak na alikuwa mdhaifu. And there were some a uh, black boys running in front of him na sasa tulikuwa na vijana wabaya waliokuwa wanakimbia mbele yake and he told the black boy to lie down in front of him na you said black black the okay. african mm-hmm. akaambia yule kijana mweusi kwamba alale mbele yake and pull up his shirt na sasa atoe shati lake and put his feet on the tummy na akaweka miguu zake kwenye tumbo yake to keep his feet warm ili miguu zake zikapate joto that is unfair right mm-hmm. si mzuri si ndio That is how many Africans have to serve the masters. Hivyo ndivyo Waafrika wengi wamekuwa katika hali ya ufungwa huko. Let me ask you. Acha niwaulize. Is God our slave? Je, Mungu we Mungu ni mtumwa wetu? But he serves us more than a slave. Lakini sasa ametupenda kuliko vile sisi tunampenda. A slave doesn't serve his master 24 hours a day. Mfungwa uanga hatumiki yule aliyemfunga kwa masaa 24. And a slave very often will say inside I don't like the master. Na pia utapata mfungwa anasema kwamba mimi simpendi na simtaki huyo mkubwa wangu. Why am I the slave and he's not the slave? Mbona mimi ni mfungwa na yeye si mfungwa? It's unfair. Hiyo sio vyema. But when God serves us, lakini wakati Mungu anapotuhudumia, does he say it's unfair? Does he say, je, yeye husema kwamba hiyo sio vizuri? Did he say I don't want to serve him? Je, usema kwamba sitaki nikuhudumie? He has rejected me so many times. Tumemkataa mara nyingi. I could have struck him dead. Oh, angeweza kutuua. But does God have this attitude? Lakini Mungu hana mawazo kama haya. He serves with willingness. Yeye anatuhudumia kwa kutaka kwake. That's why Jesus said to Peter. Hiyo ndivyo ndio sababu Yesu akamwambia Petero, If I don't wash your feet, you have no part in me. 
Kama sita kuosha mikuzangu basi wewe sio sehemu yangu. Every child of God has been washed by Jesus. Kila mwana wa Mungu ameoshwa na Yesu Kristo. Let me ask you, do you serve your husband and wife a lot? Wacha niwaonee je, wewe unahudumia mke wako ama mke wako sawa sawa? Are you willing to do it? Je, uko na moyo wa kufanya hivyo? I tell you, many husband and wife are not willing. They will complain. You didn't do it to me. Oh, what are you doing? You didn't do it to me. Oh, what are you doing? You didn't do it to me. Oh, what are you doing? You didn't do it to me. Oh, what are you doing? You didn't do it to me. Oh, what are you doing? You didn't do it to me. Oh, what are you doing? You didn't do it to me. Oh, what are you doing? You didn't do it to me. Oh, what are you doing? You didn't do it to me. Oh, what are you doing? You didn't do it to me. Oh, what are you doing? You didn't do it to me. Oh, what are you doing? You didn't do it to me. Oh, what are you doing? You didn't do it to me. Oh, what are you doing? You didn't do it to me. Oh, what are you doing? You didn't do it to me. Oh, what are you doing? You didn't do it to me. Oh, what are you doing? You didn't do it to me. Oh, what are you doing? You didn't do it to me. Oh, what Even in dating, many guys will say to a girl, "I want to have sex with you." Eh, katika hali ya kuchumbia na utasikia wana ume wana sela ukamba na taka ni fanya mapenzi jambo langono na wewe. I just want to get something from you. Na taka ni pata kitu kutoka kuako. Do you find most people dating really want to bless the other person? Usha wai pata watu akiwa katika hali ya kuchumbia na mmoja wana taka kubariki mungu ni zaidi. They just want to get something. Wana taka kupata kitu. So. You know, teach your your young people. Mufunze wale vijana. If a guy say to a girl and say, "I love you, I love you so," have sex with me. Kama mschana na sema mama kijana sema kwa na kupenda na kupenda na taka tuwe nangono na wewe. That is not love. Wambi e huo si upendo. Tell them not to be cheated by the guys. Wambi e wasidanga ni na wa vijana. If he loves you, he'll do things for you. Kama ata kama ana kupenda ata kufanya ya vitu. And not to get your body before marriage. Nasiyo kupata mwili wako kama hamuja wana. So I'm telling you, even in dating, people are not really loving. Na kuambi hata katika hali ya kuchumbia na watu hawa pendani. Now the greatest love in this world is parents' love. Na upendo mku hapa duniani ni upendo wa wazazi. Now it's you know we thank God for the parents' love. Tunashukuru mu kwa sababu ya upendo wa wazazi. But we see that even parents. They have the selfish desire. Lakin tunaona kwamba hata wale wazazi wako na ile matamanio ya uchoyo. What I'm saying is in this world there is no real love. Kile nasema ni kwamba katika dunia hii hakuna upendo wa kweli. But Jesus is so great and so real his love is that there is nothing like that in the world. Lakini upendo wa Kristo Yesu ni upendo wa kweli na ni upendo mkuu zaidi. So if you are convinced about the love of God, kuivo kama umeshawishi kaku supendo wa mungu. Your Christian life will not be the same. Maisha yako ya kikristo yao haita baki ifo. And also when you teach your people to understand God's love, na pia unapofunza watu kuelewa upendo wa mungu, to know how God has drawn them to Jesus, kuziwa jinsi mungu aliviwavuta kwa kijesu, how He keep talking to us, jinsi anavendelea kuzungumzia. To pull us away from sins, kutuvuta kutoka na dambi, and to raise up our life, na kuinua maisha yetu, so that we'll become a greater person, ili kwamba ukakutukue watu waku, and provide for us, na anatu anatu pea sisi, and give us the best, na anatu pea ili ili umzuri kabisa. You know there are many areas we can see the love of God. Kuna sehemu nyingi ambazo chaza wana upendo wa mungu. Then if people know the love of God, kama watu watafahamu upendo wa Mungu. And understand every time when we pray, na waelewe kwamba kila dakika wanapoomba, it's not just a work. Sio tu kwamba ni kazi, but it's enjoying the ministry of God. Lakini ni kuburudika katika huduma wa Mungu. Hallelujah. Oh Jesus, you're loving us. Ah, Yesu natupenda zaidi. Oh, every time When we come to God, we can learn to enjoy God. You know, since that day when I experienced joy in the Lord, the Bible says the joy of the Lord is my strength. Biblia sema kwamba upendo wa mungu ni nguvu zako. And the Bible says He will give us the joy, the oil of gladness in the Sabbath morning. Na sasa maandiko yanasema kwamba anatupa huo upendo nguvu asubuhi na hata mchana. Every time I pray there's joy. Kila wakati ninapoomba hiyo furaha, and I say could it be just from my mind? Nasema je, inaweza kuwa ya mawazo yangu? So I say I don't I don't want to think about joy. Nasema kwamba sitaki kufikiria kuhusu upendo. I just want to think about Jesus. Sitaki kufikiria kuhusu Yesu. So I said Jesus. Nasema Yesu. And the joy come again. Tena hiyo furaha inaingia. So I realize God is full of joy. Kwa hivyo nagundua kwamba Yesu akona fulu. 
na furaha nyingi and every time a prayer can experience his love na kila wakati ninapoomba ninaanza kuhisi ule upendo god is full of jo- love and joy mungu amejaa wa furaha na upendo so being in him is the greatness and enjoyment kwa hivyo kuwa ndani yake ni kule kuburudika kwa hali ya juu and he is the only one that can bless our whole life na ni yeye peke yake awezee kubariki maisha yetu to make us become great people ili kutufanya sisi tuwe watu wakuu There is no one like Jesus. Hakuna yoyote kama vile Yesu yuko. There is no like you. There is no one like Jesus. Hakuna mwingine kama Yesu. When you think about his love, unapofikiria kuhusu upendo wake, would your heart be touched? Moyo wako utaguzwa. Does my wife serve me like that? Jem, ke wangu ananihudumia hivyo? Does anyone in the world serve me like that? Kuna yote duniani anayenihudumia hivyo. If there is someone like that, kama kuna mwingine kama yeye, loving you, anayekupenda, why won't we respond? Mbona usimwitikie? And also he will raise up our life. Na atakuinua maisha yako. When we seek first the kingdom of God, unapotafuta kwanza ufalme wa Mungu. And his righteousness, na haki yake, and all these things will be added to. Na hizi vitu zingine zote utaongezea watu God knows our heart Mungu anajua nyoyo zetu If he sees that you have love for him anapoona kwamba uko na upendo kwa ajili yake Then you really put him in the first place in your life Na ni yeye ambaye unampa kibao mbele katika maisha yake Then you really seek God's kingdom Na kweli utautafuta ufalme wa Mungu God be my Lord Mungu awe bwana wangu I submit to you totally Ninajiachilia kwake kabisa God knows your heart. Mungu anajua moyo wako. You can never cheat God. Hauwezi ukamdanganya Mungu. But many people think they can cheat God. Watu wengi ufikiria unaweza mdanganya Mungu. Some people pretend to serve God. Watu wengine wanajidanganya kumtumikia Mungu. But in the heart they want money. Lakini ndani ya mioyo zao wanataka hela. They want some benefit. Wanataka zile mapato faida zingine. They want people to say you're great. Wanataka ili watu waambie kwamba ah we ni mkuu bana. When people have selfish thoughts like that. Watu wakiwa na mawazo ya kiuchoyo hivyo. Can God see that? Mungu anaweza ona hayo. He will see your heart. Ataona moyo wako. There is no way to run away from God. Hakuna popote utakimbia umtoroki Mungu. So at a time same time I know God is full of love. Na kwa hali hiyo mwenye anajua kama Mungu amejawa na upendo. He has the attitude of serving us all the time. Hakuna ile mawazo ya kututumiku kutuhudumia sisi kila wakati. At the same time I can I know I cannot escape his eyes. Na katika hiyo hali pia najua siezi nikamwepa Mungu. And anything I do for him he remember and reward. Chochote ambacho tunamfanyia atakumbuka na atani Now in a school sometimes you get a prize. Na katika shule wakati mwingine wewe unapata dawapo. You might get a little pen. Labda unaweza kupea kalamu. When you go to heaven, wakati unapoenda mbinguni, the sky give you a pen for your prize. Je, Mungu atakupea kalamu kama zawadi yako? He give you the best prize. Anakupea ile zawadi njema kabisa. But people hunger for the prize in the world. Lakini watu wanatamani tu zile zawadi za ulimwengu. I get more money than the best. Wanafikiria kwamba ukipa, akipata pesa nyingi hiyo ndio mzuri kabisa. But let me tell you if you have the heart just to bless people. Mose ni kwambie kama uko na roho ya kubariki watu. God knows your heart. Mungu anajua moyo wako. And he will reward you greatly. Na atakulipa vikubwa zaidi. Uh, let me tell you I, my first wife passed away in 2008. Mose ni kwambie mke wangu wa kwanza alikufa mwaka wa 2008. I was totally dedicated to God. Na nilikuwa nimejiachilia kwa Mungu zaidi. And I thought I would just stay single and go to different places. Na nilifikiria nitabaki bila bibi na niende tu kwenye mataifa nikibariki watu. Missionary in different places. Ili nikuwe missionary wa sehemu tofauti. But this is not God wants for me. Lakini hiyo sio yenye Mungu alikuwa amenipatia. for me this wonderful wife. Ah kumbe nilikuwa nipangia huyu mwanamke wa dhati huyu. I did not chase after her. Mimi si kumfuata. She did not chase after me. Yeye hakunifuata. God just put us together. Mungu alituweka tu pamoja. And also I seek God's guidance. Na sasa huwa ninaomba Mungu alipe mwelekeo. Because I don't want to ruin God's plan in my life. Maana nikisitaki nikaribu mpango wa Mungu ndani ya maisha yangu. I treasure the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Mimi ninaidhamana sana kule kujazwa kwa Roho Mtakatifu. I treasure the power of God that I can serve God so You know it with such power na thamani ule upa, ule zile nguvu za Mungu ili kwamba naweza nikahudumia watu kulingana na vile Mungu anataka I don't want to waste my life 
So I ask her, Lord, if it is not your will, Sasa nina muuliza Mungu kama sio mapenzi yako. Stop it with your almighty power. Si, kama kama again. Zuhia. I'll stop it with your almighty power. Nitazuia, nitasimamisha kwa nguvu za Mungu. If it is your will, kama ni penzi lako. Please accomplish it. Wewe ukaitimize sasa. And God shows many signs. Na Mungu anaonyesha ishara zaidi. To say this is the woman for me. Kusema kwamba huyu ndio mke wako. And I found that she really gave me much help and much support. Na ninapata kwamba amenisaidia mno and much love. Na amenipenda zaidi. What I want to say if you follow God, kile nataka kusema kama utamfuata Mungu. God has the best prepared for you. Mungu amekuandalia ile iliyo bora zaidi. I'm 65 already. Niko na miaka 65 sasa hivi. God gives me strength. Lakini Mungu amenipa nguvu. Play tennis. Eh anacheza ule mchezo wa tenisi, mchezo wa vikapu. And I don't need eye glasses to see small Na tena huwa siweki macho yake ama miwani kwenye macho ndo nione hizi nukta. People 20 years younger than I say, do you need eye glasses to read small letters? Watu walio na miaka 20 wadogo wao wanahitaji jizile miwani ili kusoma. I said I don't need that. <laughs> Anasema mimi sitaki hizo. When you follow God totally, unapomfuata Mungu kabisa, he will give you the best. Atakupa bora zaidi. And he will open ways for you. Na atakufungulia njia. Then you do greater greater things for God. Na utafanya mambo makuu makuu. But let me tell you in my heart I don't seek my thing. Lakini wacha nikwambie ndani ya moyo wangu huanga sitafuti akili zangu. I just say God your plan is the best. Huwa nasema kwamba Mungu mpango wako ndio bora. Human plan is not the best. Mpangilio za wanadamu sio bora. Now how many times you plan something and it doesn't come true? Ni mara ngapi umepanga vitu na mhazifaulu? But when God plans something it's the best. Mm. Lakini Mungu akipanga kitu hicho ndicho cha damana kabisa. So Romans 12 uh, verse 1 to 2. Warumi 12 mstari wa kwanza hadi They talk about that when we dedicate offer a body as a living sacrifice to God. Inasema kwamba unapotoa mwili wako kwa dhabihu iliyo hai kwa Mungu. And also when we do not conform to the world na pia kama hatuta ambatana na mambo ya kiulimwengu but be transformed by the renewal of our mind lakini tukabadilishwe kwa kupewa akili mpya then we can discern the good the perfect and the pleasing will of god tunaweza tukaitambua ile njia mzuri ya mungu so my heart i just want god's will kwa hivyo mimi ndani ya moyo wangu nataka tu mapenzi ya Mungu. I don't need human credit. Mimi sitaki nijazwe kule kujaza kwa wanadamu. It's not going to help. Hiyo haiwezi kusaidia. When I see people I just want to bless. Nikiona watu nataka kuwabariki. God has given me this heart. Mungu amenipa huu moyo. When I see people I just want to bless them. Nikiona watu natamani kuwabariki. Because my videos online in YouTube and Facebook. Manake video zangu kwenye mtandao wa YouTube na Facebook and you look for Pastor Yip YIP. Uki Google Pastor Yip YIP. You can see many of my videos. Utaona video zake nyingi and many people saw my videos all over the world. Na watu wengi wameona video zangu duniani mzima and they ask for my help. Na wananihitaji niwasaidie. Many people ask me for prayer. Watu wengi wananiuliza niwaombe. Ask me to go to the country. Wananiuliza niende nje zao. When I hear this, I just I just want to do what God wants me to do. Ninaposikia hili, huwa nataka tu kufanya kile ambacho Mungu anataka mimi nifanye. I'm very busy all the time. Mimi nimeshikika kila wakati. Some people ask me to go visit someone in the hospital. Watu wengine huwa wananiambia ni nini watembelee hospitalini. Now I would say, "Do you visit yourself?" Wile ambaye amemwambia anamula je, wewe ushawa umeshaenda kumtembelea? Did you do your part? Umefanya sehemu yako. They have done their part. Wamefanya sehemu yao. But they still need the extra help. Lakini bado wanahitaji usaidizi mwingine. I will put down my busy work and visit them. Nitaacha chini nitaweka chini zile ambazo nitakuwa nafanya alafu nili watembelee. When I serve God, I don't think of the reward. Ninapomtumikia Mungu, huwa sifikirii kuhusu yale malipo. I just think of the needy people. Huwa ninafikiria kuhusu wale ambao wako na mahitaji. Now I want to encourage you with one of my experience. Nataka sasa niwahimize na na sehemu yangu ya maisha jinsi nilivyohisi There is a woman in Hong Kong that has uh, the, her minister brought her to me 
kuna mwanamke mmoja kule Hong Kong ambaye ali, alienda kumtumikia kumhudumia to drive out demons from her ili kufukuza mapepo kutoka ndani yake and I did it na nikafanya and then she received many words from the Lord na sasa akapokea ufunuo mwingi kutoka kwa Mungu and later when in her prayer she was taken up to heaven na sasa siku moja katika maombi akapelekwa kwa mbinguni she was taken up to heaven many times amepelekwa mbinguni mara nyingi she saw the book of life Aliona kitabu cha uzima. She also saw the book of record of her re- of the reward. Na akaona mpaka kile kitabu ambacho kimewekwa dhawabu za kila mtu. Jesus show her her book of record of the reward that she received. Sasa Mungu akamuonyesha kile kitabu ambacho iko na dhawabu ambacho inafaa apate. Because I've helped her so much to raise up her spiritual life. Manake amemsaidia sana kuinua hali yake ya kiroho. She asked Jesus, akamuuliza Yesu, "Can I see Pastor Yesu book of record of reward?" Ningependa kuona kitabu cha mchungaji Yipu, kitabu cha dhawabu yake. So, Jesus told an angel to get a book. Kwa hivyo Yesu akamwambia malaika alete kile kitabu. And she said it, when she saw it, na anasema kwamba wakati alipokiona, it was thick. Kilikuwa ni ki kilikuwa ni kipana it was covered with gold na kilikuwa kimefunikwa na dhahabu and it says on top it says on top of the book juu ya kile anasema kwamba juu akamwambia juu ya kile kitabu my beloved son timothy here kimeandikwa kwa mwanangu mpendwa timoth yip katika lugha ya kichina now when i hear that Nilifusikia hayo. I feel unworthy. Nikahisi kwamba sifai. I tell you God chose me when I was weak. Nakwambia Mungu alinichagua wakati nilipokuwa mdhaifu. I have rejected God many times. Nimemkataa Mungu mara nyingi. I've sinned many times. Nimefanya dhambi mara nyingi. I'm not worthy of the change I have now. Mimi hata sisitaili ile kanisa ninayo. It's God who changed me. Ni Mungu aliyenibadilisha. When he changed me I saw the love of God. Aliponibadilisha niliona upendo wa Mungu. I want I don't want to waste this opportunity. Na sitaki nikaharibu hii nafasi. I say God I want to be used by you. Nikamwambia Mungu nataka kukutumikia sasa. To make the best of my life. Ili nikatoe katika maisha yangu kile kilichochema. So it's not my initial willingness to follow God that like that. Haikuwa ndio ile matarajio yangu ya kwanza kumfuata Mungu hivyo. It's God who drew me to him. Lakini ni Mungu aliyenivuta kwake. So I felt unworthy. Sasa nikajihisi kwamba sifai. But I thank God for that. Lakini nashukuru Mungu kwa hayo. That he remembers everything we do out of love. Yeye ni Mungu anakumbuka kila kitu ambacho tunakifanya kutoka ndani ya upendo. Because we love God. Manake tunampenda Mungu and care about people. Na tunajali watu. And I want to say to you. Na nataka niwaambieni. You have a book of record of your reward in heaven too. Uko na kitabu ambacho kiko na dhawabu zako zote kule mbinguni. Do you believe that God can give you the best? Je, unaamini kwamba Mungu anaweza kukupea ile iliyo bora zaidi? Not the world. Sio ulimwengu. Not money. Sio pesa. Not a big building. Sio majengo makuu. All these things will not be able to give what God can give you. Hizi vitu zote haziwezi zikakupa kile ambacho Mungu anaweza akakupa. So I curse people when they serve God. Kwa hivyo watu wa Mungu wanapomtumikia Mungu serve wholeheartedly. Ukamtumie Mungu, ukamtumikia Mungu na moyo wako wote. Do not serve God and be proud. Usitumikie Mungu na unakuwa na kiburi. Do not serve God and compete. Usimtumikie Mungu katika mashindano. Like one question I had just now. Kama swali lingine ambalo nimesikia sasa hivi. There are two churches nearby. Ya kwamba kuna makanisa mbili hapa. One church doesn't care about the other one. Na sasa kanisa lingine haijali kanisa nyingine. They have very loud music. Iko na muziki wa juu. So when people serve God with unwillingness to care about other churches. Kwa hivyo kama watu wengine wanamtumikia Mungu pasipo kujali makanisa zingine. What they do in the building on the foundation of Christ. Kile ambacho wanafanya katika mjengo ulio katika mwamba wa Kristo. They working hard to build on it. Wanafanya bidii kujenga juu yake. But when people have pride, lakini watu wanapokuwa na kibri, all the effort will be wasted. Ile kazi yao ambayo wamegangana nayo yote ni bure. When people just say I want a big church, what one what one up say manataka kanisa kubwa. I don't care about your church. Sijali kuhusu kanisa lako. What they're doing 
is not pleasing to God. Kile wanachofanya hakimpendezi Mungu. When God is pleased with you, kama Mungu amefurahishwa na wewe, seek first the kingdom of God. Unautafuta kwamba ufalme wa Mungu na haki yake na mengine yote utazidishiwa. All these things will be added to you. This is all things utaongezewa. We are serving a living God. Tunamtumikia Mungu anayeishi. But many people serve God with a mind lakini watu wanafanya fanyia Mungu kazi na akili God won't see my sins. Kwamba Mungu hawezi akaona dhambi zangu. I will steal sheep from other churches. Nitaiba kondoo kutoka kwenye makanisa zingine. God won't see my sins. Mungu hataona dhambi zangu. Are you thinking God is blind? Unafikiria kwamba Mungu ni kipofu? Or deaf? Ama ni kiziwi? They think they can escape God's eyes. Wanafikiria kwamba wanaweza hepa macho ya Mungu? It's very paradoxical. Hiyo ni jambo ambalo ni kubwa haliwezekani. I call this schizo faith. Schizo, like schizophrenia, split faith. You know, schizophrenia, split personality. Skills. Schizophrenia, the term. You know, this term, schizophrenia. People have this disorder, mental disorder. They have split personality. I get you. Now, kuna ule ugonzo ambao ni wa akili. How do we put it in Swahili? Just, just. Kuna ule ugonjwa ambao anauzungumzia ambao unapasua mtu anakuwa na mioyo mbili. They believe God is real. Wanaamini kwamba Mungu ni kweli and precious na mwema kabisa and powerful na mwenye nguvu but at the same time they think they can escape God. Na katika hiyo hali moja hiyo wanafikiria kwamba pia wanaweza wakamwepa Mungu. At the same time they think they need to get something from the world. Na pia wanafikiria kwamba wanahitaji kupokea vitu kutoka kwenye ulimwengu. So that's skills of faith. Sasa huo ndio ule ugonjwa nao uzungumzia. If they believe God is so good, kama unaamini Mungu ni mzuri, do they believe in the action? Wanaamini katika matendo. Oh, it all has to come from the love of God. Uh -huh. Na yote inafaa itoke katika ile hali ya Mungu. Now I can keep talking about God's love. Ninaweza endelea kuzungumza kuhusu penzi la Mungu. Just now I said how he worked in our heart before we were saved. Jesus never sema anavyofanya kazi alipokuwa anafanya kazi kabla au kolewe how he used different people to draw us to him Jesus anavyotumia watu tofauti kuwavuta kutokwe kwake how in the time when we believe in Jesus how his holy spirit worked in our heart wakati ambapo unamwamini roho Yesu wakati ambapo unapomwamini Yesu roho mtakatifu anakujaza and he gives us his love and his joy na anatupea upendo wake na furaha yake and after we are safe how we disobey him na baada ya kuoka sasa tena hatumtii he keep working in our heart anaendelea kufanya katika nyoyo zetu to change us ili kubadilisha and also he draw us to serve him na sasa anatuvuta ili tumutumikie every time we praise and worship him kila wakati unaposifu na katika ibada you feel joy unasikia furaha don't you feel joy je hausikii furaha you feel, you feel freedom yeah. unasikia kule ule uhuru so god minister to us all the time mungu anatuhudumia kila wakati even when we disobey him hata wakati ambapo hatumtii And then he give us spiritual gifts. Na anatupea vipawa za roho. He give us people to serve God together with us. Anatupa watu wa kufanya nao kazi pamoja. He give us the opportunity to build churches. Anatupea nafasi ya kujenga makanisa. And he provide for our needs. Na mpaka mahitaji yetu anatekelezea. And he want to raise up to us up to a high level. Anatuinua katika ile kiwango cha juu. And he protect us many times from danger. Na anatulinda kutokana na hatari wakati mwingine. If you think about everything God has done in your life. Unapofikiria chochote kile Mungu ametenda katika maisha yako. You say how great God is. Unasema ai Mungu huyu ni mkuu kiasi gani kweli? Who am I if I don't have God? Na mimi ni nani kama sina Mungu? So you look around, you know, I look around everything. I see God's love. Ninapoangalia kila mahali naona upendo wa Mungu. Even drinking water. Hata katika kunywa maji. Feels good, right? You relax. Unatulia. And take a few deep breaths. Na sasa unapumua ndani kidogo. You feel good. Unasikia vizuri. Every time you pray, kila wakati unapohopa, you feel good. Unasikia vizuri. God's love is everywhere. Mm. Upendo wa Mungu uko kila mahali. 
Now, if one day you discover that your husband or wife really loves you so much, you that you have someone who really dedicates his or her life for you. Would you be touched by his love? Yes. And now you discover God is so much love. And every time you pray, you can experience Him. Would you respond to Him with love? That I have no one like you. If I have I don't have you, Kama sina wewe, I have nothing. Sina chochote. But everything I give to you Lakini kila kitu will be kept in heaven. Mm. Will be kept in heaven. Itawe kwa kule binguni. So are you willing to say, Lord, from now on, I don't want that lukewarm relationship. I want to have zeal for you. Oh, yes. I want to respond like Peter. When Jesus said, if I don't wash your feet, you have no part in me. Then he said, wash my feet, my whole body. Jesus always respond with, I mean, Peter always respond with his feelings. Let me tell you, when I think of God, my whole heart is melted. <laughs> So right now we're going to pray together. And I talk about how you can experience God anytime. Jesus said, worship in spirit and in truth. So it's worship with my whole spirit and my whole soul. Now you can write this down. The soul includes three parts. Or three functions. Nafsi inahusisha kazi tatu. The mind, the will and the feelings. Kwamba mawazo, akili na hisia. Now how do we first we worship with the soul, with the mind, will and spirit and and, and the feelings. Ya kwanza tunaabudu katika mawazo, nafsi na you see mind, will and feeling. Mawazo, akili na hisia and then the spirit. Now, how to worship with all my mind? I would say everything in the Bible is good. It's the only way. Everything from God is good. So I want God only. So I submit to God. Submit to God. I agree with God totally. You know, every time I pray, I say, God, you're so good. I like you. I want you. So that's starting how to worship with the whole person. And then the will. Nia. I'm willing to give my whole life to you. I'm 65. Many, many people retire 65 already. But if I have to retire now, I will say there's so much God has given me. I want to share with people. Now, if I have to retire 70, only Five years. That's too short. Yeah. <laughs> Let me tell you, I'm not receiving any salary. I'm doing this all for free. But I don't want to stop serving. If I live up to 80, only 15 years. I still want to go longer. If God gives me 120 like Moses, I will serve until I die. Even when I'm lying on my 
I will tell people to stay with me and lay it on me. When Jesus came to take my soul, there might be a great power coming. And you might experience strong presence of God. And I want to record a video before I die and say to people in my funeral. When you watch this video, I'm in heaven already. I'm full of joy. So don't worry about me. Just follow God. Let the love of God change you. That is how I want to serve God. Even when I'm sick. I'm very weak. I want to dedicate my life to God. There is no master that we can serve like Jesus. We serve any boss on earth. He will treat you like that. Hawezi And as and then worship in with our feelings. Sasa unaomba na hisia zako. That means you really like God. Na maanisha kwamba unampenda Mungu. That we are happy with God. Kwamba tuko na furaha na Mungu. When I think about all the good things of God. Ninapofikiria kuhusu vitu vyote vizuri za Mungu. I just like God totally. Ninampenda Mungu kabisa. In my prayer I will go like this. Katika maombi yangu nitaenda hivi. You're so wonderful. Oh, wewe ni wa ajabu. I like you. Ninakupenda. I want to be with you. Nataka niwe na wewe. I enjoy you. Ninagurubika wewe. So when I pray. Ninapoomba, I can pray for hours. Naweza omba masaa. I can enjoy God. Ninaweza sherekea Mungu for a long long time. Kwa muda 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 mrefu. Because God is good. Manake Mungu ni mwema. Anytime I think of Jesus, He satisfies my soul. And then how to worship with our spirit. Psalm 103 verse 1. Psalm 103. All that is in me, praise His holy name. Chochoche amba chukikondani yangu, kusifu ndilo jina lake. All that is in me, Everything in me worship God. So I told people, it's like your whole inner being worship God. So cry to God like this. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh Lord. Oh I need you. I want you. Oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's the, from the Holy Spirit. Not just from the mind. So we start with the mind, the will, and the feelings. And go to the Spirit. And every time you pray, you might feel peace coming to you. That is what Jesus said. Peace I give to you. You might experience burdens go away. That is what Jesus said. All you who are weary and burdened, come to me and I'll give you rest. Even if Jesus na sema kwamba njohoni kwa mnyi njumuli o choisho na mizigo mizito na nimeana mita wapumzisha. Or when you have joy, kama uko na furaha, it's the oil God does instead of mourning. So every time you experience something from God, you say, God, you're so good. You came to serve me, to fill me with your love and joy, to heal my soul. So I encourage you every time you pray, don't think of it as a work. Don't look at a watch and say, oh, oh, I have to pray for half an hour. How can, how can I pray for half an hour? Oh, usiangalie msaa, useme kwamba ha, ni dakika ya kuomba Mungu sasa, ni dakika ya kuomba Mungu. Nitaomba vipi? But if you say, 
Yes, Lord, I can enjoy you for a whole day. Kitu sema kwamba ai Bwana nitakuburudika kila wakati. I can love you for a whole day. Naweza kukupenda siku nzima. And be changed by you. Na nibadilishwe na wewe. And you experience you. Na nikuhisi wewe. And you enjoy you. Na nikusherekee wewe. And you receive anointing from you. Na nipate upako kutoka kwako. To bless other people. Ili nikabariki watu wengine. And I want to say that we can also learn to be sensitive to sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Pia nasema kwamba unaweza hisi Roho Mtakatifu. When you pray and you feel peace, unapoomba na unasikia amani, you pay attention to the peace. Unakuwa makini kwa ile amani. The more you open your heart, jinsi unavyoendelea kufungua moyo wako, the stronger the peace will be. Sasa hiyo amani inakuwa na nguvu. Now many people may experience this swaying of the body. Watu wengine wanaweza sikia ni kana kwamba wanataka kusonga mbele na nyuma hivi. Now is there people support for that? Na huwa tunauliza watu waende wasaidie. In Revelation 1:17, katika ufunuo 1:17, when John saw Jesus in a glorified way, wakati Yohana alipomuona Yesu kama ametukuzwa, he fell down like a dead man. Yeye alianguka chini kama yule mfu. And in Acts chapter 9, katika matendo ya mitume 9, when saw saw the glorified Jesus, saw that we know by Paul. Uh -huh. Wakati yule jamaa aliyekuwa anaitwa Saulo, anaitwa Paulo alipomuona Yesu, also he fell down like a dead man. Aliyanguka chini kama jamaa maiti. When the soldiers tried to arrest Jesus, now come again. When the soldiers tried to arrest Wakati Jesus, wakati maaskari walipojaribu kumkamata Yesu, and Jesus says, "I am." Yesu akasema ndimi, and the soldiers fell back. Hao maaskari wote walianguka tena. So in the strong presence of God people could fall down. Katika uwepo mkubwa wa Mungu watu wanaanguka. When the power is not so strong, when the power is not so strong, kama ule uwepo hauna nguvu, people might sway in the power of God. Uh, wakati ule uwepo pia ni wa nguvu, watu wanaanza and the more open you are the stronger the sway will be. Na wakati unapoendelea kujifungua ndivyo ule, ule uwepo unaelea kuwa mwingi. You can feel the power coming to you. Unaanza kusikia ni nguvu zinakukutia. When you experience that, unapohisi hiyo, open your heart more. Fungua moyo wako zaidi. Every time you pray, kila wakati unapoomba, open your heart more. Fungua moyo wako zaidi. So you experience his presence more. Sasa unahisi ule uwepo wake zaidi. You spend more time praying every day. Wewe sasa ukajipe wakati wa kuomba kila siku. And whatever you do you keep praying na chochote unachofanya endelea kuomba like when i'm preaching now kama ninavyohubiri saa hizi i cannot preach with i cannot pray with words siwezi tunikacheza na maneno i just pray with a heart that i like jesus siwezi nikaomba tu kwa maneno lakini naomba kwa moyo unaomtukuza mungu i want jesus nasema kwamba ninakuhitaji yesu and i feel the power of god going through me na nasikia nguvu za mungu zikiniingia and god will give me words Na Mungu atanipea maneno. God will give me fire. Mungu atanipa moto. And that's how your life can be revived. Na hivyo ndivyo maisha yako yanaweza viviliwa. And you can revive your church member. Na unaweza pia ukafanyia uh, mshirika wako wa kanisa uvivio. And you pray for them. Na unapowaombea and experience the peace and the love of God. Wanahisi amani na upendo wa Mungu. And you tell them it's God ministering na to you. Na unawaambia ni Mungu anayefanya kazi. The life can be changed. Maisha yanaweza badilisha. And you say you can serve God too. Na unamwambia pia wewe unaweza fanya kazi. I can train you and teach you along to pray for other people. Ninaweza kukufunza na pia nikupeleke pia nawe ukaanze kuhudumia watu. And then you raise some people to serve God with you. Na unainua watu ambao wanahudumikia Mungu pamoja na wewe. Then they will have zeal for the Lord. Na sasa watakuwa na ile tamanio ya Mungu. And zeal to serve God. Na tamanio ya kumhudumikia Mungu. So that's how you raise up people. Hivyo ndivyo unavyoinua watu. With teaching, unafunza full of the power of the holy spirit in the teaching mjazi wa roho mtakatifu katika mafunzo and with the presence of god in our prayer na katika uwepo wa mungu katika maombi and then lead the people and train the people to go serving god na unawafunza watu kwenda kufanyia mungu kazi and encourage them to care for the people who come to na the church na unawafunza jinsi ya kuwalinda wale watu wanapoingia kanisani and if you come to come people will care about them yoyote mgeni ambaye ataingia kanisani hao watu watamlinda and listen to them na mnamsikiza and pray for them na mnawaombea or visit them na mnawatembelea to let them know the house of god is full of love kujua kwamba nyumba ya mungu imejazwa na upendo when you first love have love in your heart 
Na hiyo inafanyika kama wewe wa kwanza uko na upendo ndani ya moyo wako. Then you care about the people in your church and outside your church. Kama uko na upendo basi utawajali watu ndani ya kanisa na hale walio walioko nje. The ministry is not just a job. Huduma sio tu kibarua. But it's a high calling in God. Lakini ni mwito mkuu ndani ya Mungu. And your ministry will be remembered by God forever. Na huduma wako utakumbukwa na Mungu milele. But if you serve God with laziness. Lakini kama utamfanyia Mungu kazi katika hali ya Uvivu or serve God with pride or or selfishness ama unafanyia Mungu kazi na kiburi na ule uchoyo your ministry will be wasted huduma wako utaharibiwa so which way do you want to go je ni njia ipi unataka kwenda God's way njia ya Mungu or human way ama njia ya mwanadamu <coughs> oh Lord Jesus oh Yesu Bwana I encourage you right now to stand up. Ninawahimizeni sasa hivi tusimame. Open your heart to God. Fungua moyo wako kwa Mungu. And repent to God. Na ukaumbuka tupo kwa Mungu. And say Lord Jesus. And say Lord Jesus. Na useme Bwana Yesu, I need you. Ninakuhitaji. I want you. Ninakuhitaji. I want to experience you more. Nataka nikuhisi zaidi. I want to be changed by your love. Nataka nikabadilishwe na penzi lako. Okay. Everyone close your eyes. Kila mmoja ukafunge macho yako. Baba Jesus we love you. Ke Yesu tunakupenda. We have love us so much. Umetupenda zaidi. We count on all your blessings. Tunataka tuone baraka zote zako. How you work in our lives for so long. Umefanya kazi maisha yetu kwa muda. And see how we fail you. Na tunaona jinsi tulivyokuwa. Bwana Jesus. Oh Yesu Bwana. Revive our hearts. Ukafue nyoyo zetu. Burn in our heart. Ukatoe matukizo moyoni. Change our heart. Ukabadilishe nyoyo zetu. Live in us Lord. Ukaishi ndani yetu Bwana. It's no longer, no longer me who lives in me. Sio tu mimi ambaye nakusikiza, but Christ who lives in me. Lakini Yesu anayenielekeza. If it's me, kama ni mimi, I have selfishness. Mimi niko na uchoyo. I have pride. Niko na kiburi. I have laziness. Niko na uvivu. I have worry. Niko na makukushangaa. I need you to transform me. Nahitaji ukanigeuze. I need you to change me. Nataka unibadilishe. Oh Lord Jesus. Oh Yesu Bwana. I need you. Na kuhitaji. Oh hallelujah. Oh Jesus. Lakini wewe haufai kwa ukachini ndo ukamuhisi roho mtakatifu. 
experience peace and comfort unaelasikia amani na kutulia burdens go away na mizigo inaenda zeal for the lord unakuwa na tamanio la mungu and you say god is with me na unasema kama mungu ako na mimi god is blessing me mungu ananibariki i thank god for the love nashukuru mungu kwa ajili ya upendo i want to follow god nataka kumfuata mungu let me ask you how many of you experience some peace acha niulize ni wangapi umehisi amani or burdens go away mizigo zinaondoka Now that is that comes from the presence of God. Hiyo inatoka katika uwepo wa Mungu. So we encourage you every time you pray. Kwa hivyo nakuhimiza kila dakika unapogomba. When you feel this presence, unapohisi upendo wake, that you will say God is with me. Unasema kwamba Mungu ako na mimi. And when you more open, na kama umejifungua zaidi, his presence will come stronger. Uwepo wake utakuwa na nguvu. And every day you do that, na kila siku unapofanya hivyo, his presence will come stronger and stronger. Uwepo wake utakuwa wa nguvu na nguvu. And in the process you enjoy his presence. Katika uwepo ule unaburudika kwa ajili ya uwepo. When you think of enjoyment, unapofikiria kuhusu kuburudika, then you can pray for a longer time. Unaweza omba kwa muda mrefu. And you can also train your members. Unaweza pia funza washirika wako. Pray for each other. Kuombea kila mmoja. And then you know like after the pray na baada ya maombi you can ask them unaweza uulize unasema please keep your eyes closed hebu ukafunga macho yako have you experienced anything during the prayer je umehisi chochote wakati wa maombi the person says yes na anasema ndio and you ask him to describe it na unamwambia aeleze ni nini amesikia you say this is from the lord na unamwambia hii imetoka kwa mungu and god, god has blessed you like this na mungu amekubariki hivyo you want god to bless you more ungependa mungu aendelee kukubariki or do you want to serve god ama unataka kumtumikia mungu so i train people to serve god sasa ninafunza watu jinsi ya kumtumikia mungu by teaching about the love of god na kuwafunza upendo wa mungu and also how we can serve god and be blessed by God na jinsi tunaweza kufanyia Mungu kazi na jinsi tunaweza kubarikiwa na Mungu and train people to pray for each other na kufunza watu kuombea wengine practice in the church na kufanya mazoezi kanisani and lead them to go and pray for other people na kuonyesha njia waende kuombea watu wengine then you can do evangelism unaweza fanya uinjilisti and you can raise up people to serve God na unaweza inua watu wa kumtumikia Mungu so this is briefly you know, that that how to how to serve in a how the holy spirit even kwa ufupi jinsi unaweza unaweza unavyoweza kukaa katika nguvu za Mungu now have some of you experienced the holy spirit are more powerful can you, can you share briefly anyone here experience something more yoyote ambaye amehisi kitu kingine zaidi anaweza tushiriki na sisi tusikie maybe joy or comfort or great love in you or fire in you umesikia you really want to serve God umehisi furaha umesikia amani umesikia uko na uhuru umesikia na nguvu zaidi za Mungu it all depends on how open your heart is inategemea na vile uliyofungua roho yako okay anyone want to share or encourage the whole group